from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. Don't you know, haven't you heard, the Lord is the everlasting God. He created all the world. He never grows tired or weary. No one understands his thoughts. He strengthens those who are weak and tired. Even those who are young grow weak. Young men can fall exhausted. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Amen. Well, a well-earned rest. Does that ring a bell with anybody? Is there anybody who might like to say how you achieve a well-earned rest? Just for you. Run away, Run away says Annie. <laughs> tell us where, no, don't tell us where you're running to because it won't be a rest, will it? No. Anybody else? My goodness. Well, yes. Tell me her name. Her name is Sarah. Sarah. She was invited to a barbecue, but she's pregnant and she didn't want to go on the way to uh, Maidenhead. So she said the mother was very upset that she's not going. So she was very stressed, my daughter. So I quoted this scripture to renew her strength. Because yeah. I use it all yeah. the time. Yeah. And then this was quite a good day. So that's. That's the Lord, isn't yeah. it? That's the Lord. Thank you for sharing. Two or three. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? A well-earned rest. How do you achieve that? Find a quiet place. Find a quiet place, quiet place Cheryl. Can you find... In the country, even if there's something alone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you if you could you could probably hear Cheryl, but she was saying finding a quiet place somewhere in the country, or just listening, and then that hymn, that prayer. Cheryl says just sort of may bubble up in our minds. Thank you. Who said that? <laughs> A little voice from the back. <laughs> Switch your phone off. One more, maybe, or maybe none. Black and white film on the television, film on the television <laughs> says Ralph. Do you watch it or do you fall asleep? Oh, oh, bit of each. Yeah. Bit of each. <laughs> He's very honest. Was there one more coming from over here? Go to bed. Go to bed, yes. And hopefully, sleep. Go to bed. Okay. Well, I suppose the very obvious thing I'm going to say this morning is that getting tired is part of being human. That's right. So we're all human, whether we've shared our remedy for a well-earned rest, we're all human. And uh, it is, of course, nothing to be ashamed of to actually feel tired. That verse that uh, I just read to you at the beginning of our service is, is a wonderful one, and I know it's one that probably all of us know when we are invited to come to God. I'll just read it again. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And it came quite forcefully to me this week when I was thinking about this service that God is a loving God. He's a heavenly father. He's not a slave driver. 
He understands us. He's created us. He knows that we need times of rest. Jesus, of course, we understand from Scripture, uh, was a carpenter in Nazareth for 30 years. And so he knew the importance of the correctly fitting yoke. And you know, and I know, that when those words were used in the Bible, in Scripture, the whole understanding was that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Saviour, God's Son, then we are not alone. We are yoked to him. I looked up the message version, which I do occasionally, and Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, this is what I just want to share with you in this moment. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you learn to live freely and lightly. I was quite taken by those words when I read them. I guess I've read them before, but don't always look at the message. But I wanted to share them with you because it brings a little reminder that all of us are invited. There are no conditions attached. We come as we are to Jesus. I pray that we will do that as our worship unfolds, and not just today, of course, in all the days to come. Reading us from Mark chapter 6, verses 7 to 13 and 30 to 32. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Thank you for your word. Amen. I'm keeping my eye on the clock. It's in a very good position always in this church, so that's fine, and I've got it here as well. <laughs> the final verses that uh, were read to us a little while ago in our service are very familiar from Isaiah 40. I want us just to remind ourselves of what they mean today, I pray, for us in the world in which we live. But before I do that, quoting again from the message, just maybe I needed to remember when I was preparing for today 
that in those last verses from Isaiah 40, the prophet returns to the initial focus, the Jewish exiles in Babylon. They'd been alienated from their homeland and naturally they feel abandoned by God. And so they wait for an answer. And many of you who know the scriptures will know it was a very long wait. And no answer actually comes. And so what do they do? They do, I guess, what many of us would do. They conclude that God no longer cares about them. They conclude that God is powerless to help. I want to share with you these verses that are the same verses that were read to us towards the beginning of our service, but this time I'm using the message. Don't you know anything? Haven't you been listening? That's how it begins. And then we're reminded from Scripture of who God is. He's the everlasting God. He's the creator of the universe. He's the strength giver. He's the power increaser. He's the hope renewer. This God cannot wear out. He cannot become exhausted. Yet these amazing attributes do not make God remote. Because God the creator is also the God who cares. He's both everlasting and ever-present. He's the preserver of the universe and he's the protector of the weak. I think this is a promise for all of us. In fact, I know it is. The God who does not grow weary gives strength to those who do. And to all who wait on him, God gives strength to keep going. Our gospel reading was from Mark chapter 6, the very familiar story. Presenting a scene we can easily imagine. Mark tells us that Jesus had sent the twelve on their first mission. And they arrived back. They were exhausted. But they were exhilarated as well. But they very quickly became terribly sad. Because they had learnt of John the Baptist's death. And Mark takes just two verses to tell us what they'd done on this mission. We don't know how long it was, but Mark takes just two verses, and I'm going to remind you of the verses from Mark 6, 12 and 13. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons. They anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. There would have been great excitement in the telling. And we're left to imagine all the different situations that they encountered. Things, of course, were now moving very rapidly for Jesus and his little band of followers. 
the news of this man, Jesus, we know was spreading like wildfire. And there was a constant stream of people coming to see Jesus. And we're told in scripture that actually the disciples didn't even have time to eat. Can you imagine that? If today we went home and we were so busy, busy in our service for the Lord, we didn't have time to eat. The disciples were getting a bit ragged around the edges and I suppose today we'd call that compassion fatigue. And Jesus recognised their need. Jesus recognised their need. And he doesn't demand anything more. Because he knew that they needed time with him. And so verse 31, again, that was read to us from Mark chapter 6. This is what he said. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Well, we know that it didn't quite work out like that, certainly in Mark's account, because the crowds actually followed. Jesus intended for them to be alone with him, but the crowds would have none of that. And eventually, when they reached the other side of the lake, it was followed by the feeding of the 5,000. I remember reading of uh, a, vet a veteran missionary pilot named Bob Griffin. The book is called Cleared for Takeoff. Cleared for Takeoff. And Bob describes the planes flown in the First World War by the Red Baron and his counterparts. Planes without throttles. Throttles that help us, of course, the plane to slow down and speed up. And Bob, in contrast, flew a plane with a throttle. And the very clear instruction, and this is what it said, take off power, full power, may be used only for a maximum of five minutes. Bob says, trouble was ahead for those who ignored that instruction. I think that's a little reminder for us. God didn't design us to run at full speed all the time. God, our creator who made us and gives us life, knows we need times of rest for physical renewal, for spiritual refreshment. There is a rhythm in life that you and I know when we stop to think about it, embraces our Christian life. On the whole, we probably work best when we have rested. And we sleep best when we are a little tired from our work. I reminded myself when I was preparing that we can't live the Christian life without spending time with God, time for him to speak to us, time for us to learn how to listen to him. I know you would agree that we can only do God's work in God's strength and his strength is unlimited. 
before we sing our concluding hymn, I want to just read to you from a little book that many of you will know, Cross Purposes. I love the writings of Eddie Askew. And this is what Eddie says. And it's based on Mark 6, 31. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Lord, I'm tired, exhausted. Sometimes I wonder how I find the strength. So much to do, so little time and energy, and always one thing more, nagging at the back of my mind like toothache, unwelcome, yet hard to ignore. I buzz around, a frantic fly, battering the window pane until I fall exhausted to the sill. All noise and movement, but so little done. And in the effort to respond to all the calls that others make, I find I'm losing touch with you. The crowds get in between. The more I do for you, the further off you seem. A paradox. Until I hear your voice, not asking more of me, but telling me to find a breathing space, a place to rest. And in the quiet, you are there. No accusations, no suggestions that I could do more. And as we sit together, I begin to realize that many of the demands I face are self-imposed. They're mine, born out of ego. And the guilt I feel when I can't cope comes from my pride and not from you. Forgive me, Lord, and help me to forgive myself because I ask more of myself than you do. And when I'm faced with something I just can't find the energy to do, give me the honesty to face the fact that maybe you're not asking it of me. You made the world. It wasn't me. And valued as I am, it's you who keeps it going. Amen.